Hi, Julie here, and today I'm going to talk about a new bracelet pattern that I have that uses the double hole paper bead roller to make beads with a an oval shaped hole, hole in them. And uh, let me see, show, show you an example. I have a few beads made here that are not ready glazed, but basically what it is, it's a bead with an actual hole in it that is oval shaped and uh, it's designed to work with quarter inch elastic that can go through the holes flat and basically what you're going to do is you're going to use a double hole paper bead roller like this one to roll up your paper strips and this one happens to be 332nd and it actually has the number stamped on it if you're buying them uh, recently I only just started stamping these a couple months ago um, you can buy a 16th inch with two pins in it, or you can buy the 8th uh, inch, and the 8th inch has a 018 for 018, and then this is 116 for 116, and this is 332 for 332nd. Okay, and 332nd is what we're using today. Okay, and uh, the paper that you're going to be using is eight and a half by eleven paper and uh, there's no special paper you can use the cutting templates if you want but they're not free they're available on my Etsy shop and uh, you can there's a link provided from my website and basically what you're going to do is you're going to take a colorful eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper or one that you can print off on your computer or anything like that I happen to use for this bracelet papers that came from this stack of papers here and uh, I also have some that I actually printed to make these beads this was actually one sheet of paper the way I had um, designed this one is it had uh, this they were alternating beads, the, some that had the red gingham and some that had red roses. And that will also be coming out in a little while. They're not available yet. Okay, so back on the paper. I got most of them rolled up. And this is what they look like before they're glazed. So I'm going to show you how to actually roll that one up right now. And it's actually a little bit easier than doing a normal double hole paper bead, whereas you don't actually have to pinch the paper between the pins. If you've seen my other video on how to make double hole paper beads and using these double hole paper bead rollers, you'll see what I mean. So I've got my paper cut here. Basically what it is, it's one long 11 inch piece of paper that is 5 eighths of an inch wide. And that's the base. And then you have this one, which is the top piece, which is 5 eighths of an inch at one end and quarter inch at the other. And basically, to get started, you're going to need your pallet of glue with a toothpick, and you're going to need your white glue just to get it started. This will help keep it in place. And you can use a glue stick for the rest of it. And I've discovered that you really don't need to use the glue until the very end, but uh, you can use it, and I'm going to show you how to do it with just a little bit of glue. So you're going to go ahead and put in your crease just to get started. And at this point, believe it or not, you can actually take it off the pins because you've got that little bit of a crease. Put your glue on it. Okay, and all the way to the edge. Put your double hole paper bead roller back in and just kind of hold it there and flip that over and just hold it for a few seconds to hold it down and at this point just go ahead and start rolling you just did you wanted that glue at the very beginning just to hold it in place and make it easier to roll and you want to be as careful as you can with this this is another reason why I'm not going to bother putting glue on the rest of it um, so that way I can adjust it when, it when I take it off the pins and believe it or not I'm going to be turning this strip around and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment you do want to put the glue on here just to hold this end down before you start adding on your second one and just go ahead and glue it down 
And if you want to see me do another bead like this again, just go ahead and rewind the video and uh, watch it over and over again as many times as you need. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing now is I actually want to glue my strip right on this edge just to keep on going. So I'm just going to go ahead, take it off the tool and turn it around. So that way it's where it needs to be. I'm going to put this down, pick up my other strip and put a little tiny bit of glue on here right on the very edge. And you can put as little or as, as much as you want on it um, lengthwise. Just, just enough so that it doesn't make a huge mess. Okay, and then go ahead and put it up against the edge of the first strip. And you want to center it as close as you can. And then just start rolling it just like you did the, the other, the first strip. Just roll it and roll it and roll it until you get to the end. And then you're going to glue down the end just like every other paper bead. In fact, you could use whatever strips you want, but this is uh, the these templates is what I actually used for this particular bracelet. And then just go ahead and glue that down. Okay, then the next step is once you have all of your beads made, you're going to go ahead and string them on your uh fishing line. But if you need to adjust it, just push it down on your table. There, and that 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 bead is ready for glazing. Okay, I'm not going to actually show you how I string them on. That's why I made this string of the different colors. Okay, basically what I did is I used my crimp bead at the end, made a loop and crimped it down. Then I added a waist bead. The waist bead needed to be there so that it won't go through your uh, your wide hole beads or your oval hole beads. And then put all your oval hole beads on and put another um, bead. It can be a waist bead if you want. And uh, just go ahead and put that on. It's a stopper bead. And then make a loop on the other end. Put your crimp bead, Put make the loop and secure it and then you have it ready to hang and dip. And I dipped this four times in my PC Petrifier and then once in, I use a liquid laminate but you could also use Vibrance. In the instructions it says Vibrance. It use basically whatever you like to use normally and to me I found this is the best way to actually glaze them is to dip them. Especially since these don't really fit on a toothpick to glaze them one by one by brush. And uh, so that's basically it. And uh, next step, we'll show you how to put the bracelet together. Okay, now that you have your beads made, uh, this is what you're going to do to assemble your bracelet. You're going to need your beads, uh, 11 or 12, or how many you're going to need to go around your wrist. You're going to need a ruler. You're going to need a binder clip and two safety pins and you're going to need some quarter inch elastic that is um, it's braided and I have I'm going to be using black since my beads have black in them uh, you could use white and color it if you're going to be using a different color you can use the sharpie markers to color them if you want to and you're going to need a pair of scissors you're going to need sewing thread and a needle and I happen to have my needle right here and you're going to um, and this is what you're going to do you're going to uh, measure your wrist and add one inch I know that my wrist happens to be seven and a half inches and actually I already have some out of the package so I'm going to cut it from that and so I need seven and a half inches because my wrist is actually uh, six and a half. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this around my wrist to get a, a more accurate value or size. And then I'm going to measure that and it's seven inches. So I'm actually going to add an inch to that and it's going to be eight inches. So I'm going to cut it off. 
Okay, and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to measure in about an inch. And then you're going to take the other end and overlap it to meet where that inch is. And hold on to it for a few seconds. And you're going to put a binder clip there just to hold it together. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you need to add stoppers and you're going to put the stopper on each side just a teeny tiny bit away from the edges of both ends and I mean just a little bit like a eighth of an inch sixteenth of an inch something like that because basically what these are for is to keep the beads onto the elastic while you stitch up the sides okay so there's one side and I'm going to close that up and then the other side and right on the edge almost touching where this ends alright I'm going to close that end up okay so that way you have all this set up just like this now you're wondering how am I going to get the beads on that well that's why I had you use the binder clip so you're going to take the binder clip back off and you're going to start with either end, whichever end you want and you're going to pull the safety pin all the way over just like that so that you're going to be stringing, stringing your beads on over the uh, safety pin and if you use any other type of beads other than these that have the oval holes this won't work okay so you're going to go ahead and start stringing them on and uh, I know that I need to use 11 beads and since I know there's going to be 12 beads in my little bucket of beads here um, I just need to leave one behind and you're going to end up stretching the elastic that's why I had you put the safety pins on it because it's going to be a stopper and your elastic is going to stretch like crazy in fact this elastic let me show you it'll stretch a lot so that way you can fit all your beads on there without any problem if you want your bracelet to be slightly loose and not so tight on there you can add one more bead and I might actually just do that because uh, in this set, I took this apart and I'm doing it over again just for the sake of the video. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do 12 beads instead of the 11. That'll make it slightly bigger and it won't feel so tight on my wrist. This one's mine because I'm keeping it. All right. And you might have to fight with it near the end, but believe me, this is going to work. Uh, you know what, 11's enough. That's what I have in the picture and that's actually what works. So make sure you pull on your safety pin and you push it over to keep it in place. And now you're going to stitch these two loose ends together. And so you're going to put them back together with your binder clip. And since um, we put the pins just barely beyond the one inch mark you can almost just go ahead and make sure that they touch and pull you know pull apart your safety pins so you can get to them put your binder clip back on okay this can be tricky just be patient it'll happen I've done this two or three times and yeah it works you could have given yourself a little bit more breathing room if you wanted to but I decided not to okay and clip them together they'll stay together until you are ready to remove it and you're going to pull up your needle and thread and I like to wax my thread and I use one of these to wax it so I just kind of pull it in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some fresh thread on there and I'm going to wax the thread before I even thread the needle so grab about 18 inches of thread 
maybe a little more and cut it off and then you're going to run the thread through the wax and what the wax does is it gives the thread body so that it that way it won't twist and curl on you and knot up as you're stitching and you're going to want to do this two or three times because the thread is kind of thin okay turn it around to do the other side that was actually wrapped around your fingers Okay, and then do uh, with your fingers go from one end to the other just to kind of clean it up a little bit and to really rub that wax in there and then you should be all set to go ahead and thread your needle and if you need to just cut a little tiny bit off to get any frays off of it and stick it through the needle Sometimes this can be can be tricky. Okay, let's try the other side. Sometimes it makes a difference which way the uh, thread came off the spool. And that one I see a little hair on it. All right, I see the hole and I, I usually have no problem getting it through the hole all right this should do it Okay, so I got it back, I got it through the hole, finally, took me a few seconds. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and knot the other end, and I'm ready to begin stitching. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to start on the opposite side of where the clip is clipped onto the elastic and I'm going to put the needle in behind both elastics and up through both elastics right on the very end and I'm just going to pull it through and you're going to do uh, make the stitches about sixteenth of an inch or so apart so that way you'll, you'll, ha you'll end up with a lot of stitches and you are going to get some residue of the wax on your elastic that'll wear off don't worry about it okay and it won't show all right so um, I'm not going to do this whole side on camera so I will be giving me just a few more seconds here Okay, so I've reached the end here and I need to turn around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it like this and put my needle down right here across the elastic right on top. I mean the stitches aren't going to show so it doesn't really matter and uh, that you do big chunky stitches. So just go ahead and pull that over at this point you can go ahead and take off your binder clip set it aside and continue stitching okay and then I like to bring it back up and continue like I did on the other side grabbing a few stitches at the very corner overlap them alright and then you're going to continue down this side And at some point, your thread may start to twist and bunch on you because the, every time you pass it through, the wax does rub off a little bit. 
Um, I just deal with it. I just, just stitch right over the loop. And it won't come undone eventually. You know, it won't come undone. And this really is the best way to close up this bracelet is using this elastic. I tried using clear elastic and it just did not work. I tried heat sealing it, I tried stitching it, and it was just too brittle and it broke. So I'm not even going to use clear elastic for this. But black or white works just fine. If you can find any other colors, go by all means, go ahead and get other colors. Uh, black and white is what I was able to find. And again, with the with the white elastic, you can color it with Sharpie markers. It'll be fine uh, to match your bracelet colors. And uh, let's see. And uh, I have happened to have some beads ready for another one that I'm going to be doing in red and white. And I'll just use the white elastic for that. Um, and I'm just about done here and then I'll show you what to do next. It's going to be taking me just another 10-15 seconds here and I'll have this side done. Okay, this one went around my uh, safety pin so just loosen that up and pull that over and continue on. Part of the reason why I continue doing this side um, so you can see the whole thing is so I wanted to show you how I am going to knot the end. Okay, I'm going to do one more stitch for security. And now I'm going to knot it. And basically what you do is you want to slide it under a few stitches on the elastic itself. Bring up a, you know, make a loop. And you can bring your your needle through that loop two or three times. One more. Okay, so that way you're going to get a good tight knot. And you can do that once or twice, and that'll be fine. And make sure you cut it close to your work. So that way it won't show. And black, it won't show at all. Okay, so I'm going to cut that off. That's done. And now comes the best part, releasing the uh, safety pins. So we're going to take that one off. And we're going to take this one off. And then start stretching. All done. And make sure you, if, if you have any of these little fuzzies and you don't like it, just hide it inside a... Uh, a bead and you'll be fine or you can trim them off but it's basically done that's it okay I wanted to thank you for watching and if you like what you see and you want to see more of my videos just go ahead and sit this hit the subscribe button uh, leave comments go ahead and like the video if you like it and uh, go to paperbeadcrafts.com for more patterns and ideas and more information on how to make paper beads. All right, thank you and have a great day and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.